Fear not, America. This is Pastor Elliot Cook here at Jackson Street Baptist Church with a word from the Lord for you today. I pray that after all these times of seeing my smiling face, you finally have stopped to listen and hear uh, what God has to say. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 12, all the way down to 23 is where I'd like to read today. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised, and he has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. <laughs> More than that, we who are found to be false witnesses about God, we have been found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he has raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ, verse 20, thank God for verse 20, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, and then when he comes, those who belong to him. Hmm. Um, lots here in this passage. He's playing the devil's advocate, saying that there is no resurrection. Of course, there's a resurrection. Jesus proved that. He rose from the dead, and 500 people seeing him at one time. Obvious, there is such a thing as life after death. Um, and he rose not in this life, but he rose with that... Um, uh, glorified body. He didn't raise like Lazarus came back to this life with a body that was like his old body, uh, a human body. Jesus, when he was resurrected, uh, didn't come back to life. He wasn't raised back to life. He was raised to a new life. He was given his glorified body, not a human body at all. And um, that's what we have to look forward to as well. Anyway, he plays the devil's advocate in verse 20, as I emphasized, um, Christ has indeed been raised. You cannot deny this historical fact. You know, it's sort of like Jesus's existence. You can't deny it. Uh, his birth, um, his death on the cross, you can't deny it. The resurrection, you can't deny it. Oh, yes, I can. Well, sure, you can say the words, but there's more historical evidence that Christ rose from the dead than there is that JFK was shot. And that's a Supreme Court justice um, saying that. So, yeah, you can deny the truth or you can finally submit uh, to the facts and believe the history as it's recorded in... First Corinthians and many other places. But um, yes, uh, for as in Adam all die, death came to us through Adam. So through a new Adam, Jesus, all are made alive who will trust and believe in him. And uh, we will be raised either in a, um, a state after we're, we're dead, we're going to be raised from the grave or will be translated. We who are alive will be caught up together with those who are coming uh, with our Lord uh, to grab us and take us. And we'll, we'll have that moment, that twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, and we shall be changed and transformed into this glorified body that Christ also had. Combining other passages, thinking of all sorts of thoughts here. If you can follow me, I'm moving quickly, but I got to tell you, the resurrection has happened and it's going to happen 
for you who are trusting in Christ, it's a foregone conclusion. You know, you're playing chess with somebody, you can see it. He's got me in three moves. There's nothing I can do. If I, anything else that I do doesn't matter. It cannot stop this. In the same way, Satan is, is in a corner. There's nothing he can do to stop it. Christ has won the victory. You will be raised to eternal life. You will live together in glory if you're trusting and believing in Jesus. If you've denied him, then Satan has you cornered and there's no hope for you. But if you're trusting and believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, you have forgiveness and the hope of eternal life. You will be raised. God cannot fall on his promise and not fulfill it. He never has. He never will. He will see this through. He saw us through 2020, didn't he? Some of us were wondering there for a while. And now we're in 2021. The vaccine's being, being given out to more and more people. We're going to get back to normal people. There's hope. And that's a vaccine. That's, that's a man thing. Can you imagine if we have the vaccine for sin and death and we don't have to fear these things anymore and that we have the hope of glory, eternal life in heaven forever. The resurrection is, is, is yours who trust in Jesus. I pray that you are trusting in Jesus and that you're looking forward to this glorified body. You know, my old body, it's breaking down. It's betraying me. In the uh, 40s, I started to lose my sight, right? And in the 50s, I started really packing on the weight. Ugh. Then the aches and pains. It seems as though every decade, there's a, there's a new... Uh, way of God wooing us from this world. But uh, when we get older, it gets tougher. It gets tougher. You know, old age isn't for the faint of heart. It's not for the, for the weak-minded. Uh, you got to be strong. But hang in there. Um, God's not finished with us. Uh, the older saints, uh, you got plenty to give for God. And there's no retirement uh, I know some of you hate to hear this, but there's no retirement in Scripture. If you're a Christian, you're to serve him with every ounce of your strength, every ounce of your fervor, uh, your entire life, not just your working years or your younger years. It may have been easier in some respects. In some ways, it's easier now because I know God's word so much better than I did years ago. I pray that that's true for you as well. You need to grow and mature in your faith every day, adding to your faith from God's word. Get into it. Get into Bible study with others. Read it for yourself. Get a journal. Get a book. Uh, they're called uh, commentaries. You get a commentary and it will tell you uh, what that passage means. And much like I describe it and explain it to you on a video. You can read about it in a, in a book called a commentary. I encourage you to get a commentary or a devotional book for that matter. It might be a page a day or, or a short chapter that you can read every day and it talks about a passage and gives you illustrations and, and helps you organize your prayers. There's all sorts of helps people. It's not just tuning in here at hashtag fear not America. It's, it's, there are many things and church and fellowship is certainly part of it. Um, you got to make use of all these tools if you want to grow as a Christian, not just one or two of them. You want a lot of tools. You want to have your toolbox full so that you can accomplish much for the kingdom of God. When you get to him, seeing him face to face, and he says, uh, I'll let you in because you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Here's your sins. <sighs> you sure needed my son's help. What have you done for me? Well, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Jesus. But surely 
I did something for you, Lord. Can you look over those things? Yep, here's one thing that you did for me. Thank you for doing that. Or, oh yeah, the record shows you were very active. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, yeah. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. <sighs> there is retirement. It's called glory. It's called heaven where you can finally rest from your labors of this life of building God's kingdom for it will be complete just as you and I will be perfect and complete, not lacking in anything. God's kingdom will be finished. It will be finished. Until then, keep working. Keep the faith. If you've got a question, put it down below. You need a fellowship and you're in the Scranton area, we're open at Jackson Street, 10 a.m. on Sunday. Come by. Start the new year right. Get back into fellowship. You and your family, bring them all. Uh, we'd love to have you. And uh, Jackson Street, 10 a.m. on Sundays. We're practicing social distancing still, of course. Uh, we love you, Scranton. Hang in there. And uh, fear not, America. Turn to the Lord. Heavenly Father, bless each one who hears these words this day. Encourage their heart. May they have a smile. Uh, because they have a secret. Um, they have an assurance. They have a blessed hope. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day.